Hey, what's up, guys? It's Craig here, and um, today I got a tutorial on uh, that little video you saw in the beginning of this video, and I did that basically just using uh, spline effectors, random effectors, metaball, cloner object, and some geometric shapes. And sorry if I sound a bit like tired or something, but I just woke up. As you can see, it's seven in the morning. All right, so let's get started. You want to open Cinema 40, and first I'm going to change the aspect ratio to 16 by 9. Alright, so once you do that, you're going to want to go to MoGraph and get a cloner object. And then you get a sphere. And once you get the sphere, you want to lower, uh, higher the segments. So it's nice and round when you put your material in, and it doesn't look all choppy and chiseled. And you want to lower it a bit to like around 70. And you put that inside the cloner object. And what you want to do is go to MoGraph and get a spline effector. Spline effector. And once you get the spline effector, you're gonna we're gonna need to have a spline that's kind of like a helix, like as in the video. So you want to go to your splines and use a helix. And you can basically use anything of this for the spline effector and I'll show you guys how to use helix and text because that's the only one I messed with I'm pretty sure you can use any one but yeah so right now we're going to be using the helix and then once you do that you're going to want to rotate this 90 degrees oh actually yeah, let me put another zero 90 degrees go to the helix and put the height up to like about something like that you could also mess with how much like little turns you want it if you want a lot or a little bit it just depends and once you do that you're going to want to go to your spline effector and right here it's going to ask you what spline do you want to put in get your helix and drop it in there and once you drop it in there you can see that the cloner object automatically wraps and mutates with the spline and that's kind of the effect we're going for so then what you want to do now is go to object and count and just higher up your count and you can see right there that you start to get some action, something going on. And once you do that, the cloner object, you're gonna want to you're gonna want to mess with the meta bowls now, so then you can get that effect of like different size spheres. And that sounds kinda of gay, I know. But yeah. Alright, and also what you want to do is if you want to animate this, I'll also show you guys how to animate it later on right now. So first we're going to go to arrays and get a meta ball. Get the cloner object and drop it inside the meta ball. As you can see you get a big meta ball. Like it just looks like a huge blob. So now if you want to get rid of that blob, you're going to have to resize it. So then you want to lower this and the more you lower your editor subdivision, the more your computer is going to lag. So I'll just leave mine about 7. We have a piece of shit computer. And then obviously we have too much spheres, so it's, that's why it looks like this. So you want to go to the cloner object and lower your spheres. You can either lower your spheres or lower the size of the spheres. Let's put some more spheres. There we go. Now you see, you see the metal ball. What it's supposed to do. What metal ball does is that it's for, it uh, forms and makes two spheres, and it makes like this blobby effect look. So let's put some more. And obviously it doesn't look as good because there's they're all the same size. So what you want to do is go to MoGraph and get a random effector. Go to Cloner Objects. Make sure a random effector and the spline effector are in here. Then you go to the random effector and you go to perimeter. Uncheck position and check scale. And we're going to want to put this at like around 1. Mm, maybe a little bit smaller, so like 0.5. Nah, 1 is good. You could also mess with these. Doesn't show much, but yeah. Let's see what we got here. That looks a little bit better, but as you can see, there's a lot. Of spheres, so you're gonna want to lower the size of, 
uh, the amounts of spheres this spline has. Alright, so that's basically how you get it and you do it. So now I'm going to show you guys how to animate it. You want, you want to click the auto keyframing and make sure this starts at let's go to the spline effector editor and make sure it starts at both of these are at 100 if you want it to start from the top and go up make sure both of these are at 100 if you want it to start from the top and go down then make sure they're both at zero alright so now what you do I want mine to start from the bottom and go up so I'm gonna have both of these at 100 and then I'm gonna go to about 30 keyframes and then lower the start to zero and then go to about 70 and lower that as you can see though it, it moves too fast so you can spread these out so you can move a bit smoother what you can also do though so if you don't want it to move so fast so then you can see some of the metal balls you could also uh, make the height of the helix even bigger space them out or lower your cloner object See, there you go you get a better one that's basically just how to animate it and then you can render that out and also I'll show you guys the material I used and the lighting I used you just want to open up a material get a color something black like really dark gray and then go to reflection you could use for now but I didn't use for now I just used just like around a six reflection uh, let me move this keyframe back since it's on auto keyframing and then you want to drop that into the metal ball and it's red because of the auto keyframing I messed up and accidentally put the black while I was over here but yeah so that's basically the black I use but as you can see since the background is black it doesn't look as well so you want a background color you want to make sure you have a background and then see there it goes it looks a little bit better but if you want to get some reflection and uh, what you could do, you could use some lighting or the Gracie Gorilla HDRI kit. Um, I don't have that. I'll be getting that soon, and I'll probably just make a review on it to see if it's like really worth the money and if it's really good. So, but what I did for the lighting on this one, I just used some planes and some luminous lighting. So you get some planes, make that a little bit big, something like that, and then. You go here and just check the luminance. You put that inside the plane and you get that bright light. And you want to rotate this about like 20 degrees or something so then you could get, instead of just getting the top, you get like the front as well. Something like that. Hide this a bit more. Pull it down. Just mess with it. And then let's start it see what we get here and there you go you see you get some nice reflections um, you could also use this material that's a preset if you have the full version you go to file load materials I think it's architecture and no hmm hold on uh, let's see probably MoGraph I don't remember what it was but it was alien or something like that Cinema 40 alien there it is you go to Cinema 40 materials Daniel and then alien and you get this one this one looks pretty cool I'm gonna pull this back so then it doesn't become red and you just put that on the metal ball get rid of that one and let's see if it works yeah, so you get this brown, like, weird-looking material. That looks pretty cool, I guess. But, yeah, that's basically for the helix. And um, I'll also be showing you guys how to use uh, for text if you want, like, objects to uh, animate around text. Well, not animate, but, like, wrap around the text. Um, and I accidentally clicked this, and now it's not responding.
just shows how bad my computer is. Just let me reopen it. 740. Uh, Alright, so then we want to go back to 16 by 9. And then what you want to do now is go to the text right here. Get, let's get a cloner object. Let's get a spline factor. Uh, we might. I don't. Think, I think that's all we're gonna need for this. And you could use spheres. You could use pyramids. You could use whatever the hell you want for to wrap around the text. But I'll just be showing you guys the spheres. So then, what you want to do now is you want to make it smaller because obviously you don't want like three big spheres. On the, one on the T, one on the E. You want the spheres so you can see actually the text and the letters. So you want to lower this to about 15 or 14. And then you go to spline effector and drop the text where it's asking for the spline. Go to effectors, make sure spline is in there. And then we go to the cloner object and we're going to want to put some splines up. I mean, some count up and what we do now is uh let's see where the tech the spline effector you want to make sure instead of use index it's full spacing or random all right and let's see here so not going I'll try it. There's nothing inside the cloner. I forgot to drop the sphere inside the cloner object. Alright, so then you just higher it up. And you can see you start to get that. Or you can see that it says text. You could also put some pyramids in there. But they're too big, so you're going to have to resize them. It's about 10, 10, 10, or maybe 15. can't really see the pyramids but yeah just mess with it um, yeah let's see maybe it would look better if it was on full spacing yep that's basically how you do that um, you could animate this so like a bunch of spheres just come from the back and then just come and wrap around the text um, yeah just basically just mess with this and I was messing with spline effectors because I was looking for a tutorial to do yesterday and I just happened to figure out how to do this. So hope you guys like the tutorial and if you guys have any tutorial requests please post a comment and um, yeah that's basically it guys so please comment and rate and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.